This is the video lesson for 8.3c. Your objective today is use an algebraic representation. So there's that word, algebraic representation. To explain the effect of a given positive rational scale factor applied to two-dimensional figures on a coordinate plane with the origin as the center of dilation. Okay, so here's what that says. When we say use an algebraic representation, what we're really saying is what happens? What happens? Okay, and it means what happened to x and what happened to y? What happened to the x value? What happened to the y value? So it's not asking you for the new point when we dilate a figure. It's asking you what happened to the, to the x coordinate and what happened to the y coordinate. And it's all talking about the effect of dilating a figure. So this part, given positive rational scale factor, applied to two-dimensional figures, we don't need all of that because that's all we use. So the effect of a dilation with the origin, that's 0, 0, as the center of dilation. So that's important right there. Everything we do this year with dilations will have the origin as the center of dilation. And what that means is that that's where I'm dilating from, is the origin. That's zero, zero. So that means, that makes this actually really easy. Because I'm just going to do the same thing to x and y when we're dilating a figure. And we just do whatever the scale factor is. So it's super, super easy. Let's look at number one together and let me show you. Triangle ABC is dilated from the origin, okay, so we don't even need to be told that because all of your questions will say that, with a scale factor of 3. Which of the following is the new coordinate for point A? Well, it doesn't matter if we're talking about A, B, or C. We don't even need to know what these coordinates are because it's not asking us for the new coordinates. It's just asking what happened. What happened to the X value and what happened to the Y value? Well, all we're going to do is take it and multiply x by the scale factor and multiply y by the scale factor. So that means it's going to be x times 3 and y times 3 because 3 is the scale factor. So which one of these matches it? It's not x plus 3 and y plus 3. One third x would be if the scale factor was 1 third. And we're not subtracting. It's this one right here. This is x times 3, or 3x, and y times 3, or 3y. And that's all we're doing. So basically, we're just going to stick the scale factor in front of x and in front of y to multiply it. Easy peasy. Let's look at number 2 just for clarification. Okay, it says, look at point T on the pentagon below. So we're looking at point T right here. If the pentagon is dilated by a scale factor of one half from the origin, what will be the new location of point T? And again, this is algebraic representation, so it's not asking for the actual coordinates, although we could find the actual coordinates. It's just asking us what happened. So T, that means I'm going to take the x value, half of that, so that means it would be here, and the y value, half of that, so it would be right here, is where the new one would be. And then the whole thing would kind of look like this. This is not exact, but then we would have this itty bitty pentagon in the middle, because we shrunk it. One half means that it's half the size. So, that means I'm just going to take the x value times one half, and the y value times one half because that's my scale factor, and that's this, 1 half x, 1 half y. Easy peasy. So now I would like for you to do number 3, number 4, and number 5 on your own. You can bring it to me after each question for a stamp, or you can do all three and then get your three stamps together. Please don't move on with the video until you have gotten stamps for number 3, number 4, and number 5. So you can pause the video now for those questions.
look at number 8 together. A rectangle has vertices E, F, G, and H. The rectangle is dilated so that G prime is located at 5, negative 5. Okay, so we start off with G, which is at 2, negative 2, and we end up at G prime, which is at 5, negative 5. Which algebraic representation represents this dilation? All right, so all we have to do here is look and see. First of all, it should always start with x, y, because this is our x and this is our y. We haven't done anything to them yet. And so really, I can pretty much guarantee that f is going to be our answer, because none of the others start with that. They all have something else and go to something else. But let's go ahead and check this out. So to go from 2 to 5, what happened? Well, I had to multiply by something. Multiply by 2.5. 2.5 times 2 is 5. Okay, now let's look at our y values. This is our x value. Let's look at our y value. To go from negative 2 to negative 5, same thing. We multiply by 2.5. So I can pretty much say that my scale factor is 2.5. But looking at my answers, I don't see 2.5 anywhere. I do see a lot of 5 over 2. Well, let's divide 5 by 2. If you do that on your calculator, you'll actually see that that's the same thing as 2.5. So we're just going to ignore this since we don't have any of those in our answer choices, and we're going to say the scale factor is 5 over 2. So 5 over 2 times x and 5 over 2 times y. So that is what happened. On your own, I'd like for you to do number 7. It says the triangle below has been dilated. Write the algebraic representation that represents this dilation. So that should be in the form of something x, something y. Something times x, something times y. Also keep in mind that this is our old figure here, and it may be hard to see. That's a prime, so this is our new figure out here. So it got bigger. So you just need to look at each point, say, what did we do to this point, to our x value, to get this x value? And what did we do to our y value to get this y value? And then same thing for b and c to double check. So please pause the video now and bring this to me when you have an answer for number 7. Okay, number nine, I'm going to just help you get started on. First of all, it's kind of hard to read some of this, so let's read it together. Polygon QRST, QRST, below was dilated by a scale factor of 9 fifths, 9 over 5. So let's write that in where we can read it easily, 9 over 5, to create polygon Q prime, R prime, S prime, T prime. So we're going to be multiplying each side by 9 fifths to get the new side. What is the length in centimeters of R prime S prime? So all we really care about is this side right here. They've given us a lot of extra information, but it's not asking us for the perimeter. It's not asking us for all four sides. It's just asking us for this one. So I'm going to leave this to you. Be very careful how you fill in your bubbles because doing all the right work but bubbling it in incorrectly is going to have it counted wrong. So just be careful with that. And then bring me number 9 when you're finished with it so I can stamp it. And then at that point, I should be able to get a grade for you and get your grade for 8.3C into the gradebook.